That's your raised edge trim. So you basically just pin them into position. Making sure it's flush with the front of it basically, okay? So we'll basically run a bead of mastic along our edges, fill in any of these holes, any joints, voids, any holes at all, pump this material into it. Even the like of back here and stuff, you know? So when we go to do our liquid, that there's no basically holes for stuff to fall down, because our liquid will run. So you use this to basically plug anything. This is basically made from the same stuff, so they're very compatible and they'll bond to each other and they won't come apart, you know? That's the stuff in the silver tubes, right? Primer. This is the stuff that goes off in 15 minutes, 10 usually as well. We can pretty much go straight on as well, we don't have to wait. Use it to smooth and move it around. Always squeeze off any excess. But we say prime everything. Sometimes those trims are a little bit dusty and stuff, you know what I mean? So a prime is always a good idea. You're better off for the material will stick pretty much to everything, but you're always better off just priming. For example, even OSB. We've done it a few times, little tests and stuff here. We put it on OSB, old dirty OSB, unprimed. No one can pull it off. But, yeah. better safe than sorry, yeah, you know? So that effectively is an adhesive as well, is it? Oh yeah, this stuff is, won't come off. <laughs> Oh yeah, you can use it as a glue and it, like kind of as well, but it, the adhesion of it is unreal. Right. Ah, it's just, like it's serious. It's a couple. Of, it is a multi-purpose waterproofing system, so you can use it for various applications. We use it predominantly in roofs, balconies, but it's used in things like buns and all sorts. It's chemical resistant. It's UV stable. It's flexible. It's hard wearing, so it lends itself to a wide variety of applications. Okay. You know, it's a, it's one of them kind of performance coats. So yeah, it lends itself to all sorts of applications. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, I'll do that now. Right, so when you're doing this taping and jointing and stuff, basically what you want to do is make sure that you have a minimum of four inches, realistically five or six, either side of where you're taping. You don't want any dry spots, you know? Okay. liquid on top. You might bang that in now actually, I didn't cover that. So again, this is going to be a four inch tape, so we're making sure there's a minimum of five-ish inches either side. It's about a one minute do. So I've well accommodated liquid on either side. I've got a big area like 10, 15 meters long. What kind of like lengths you want to cut your tape out? Being a half to a meter shot. Whatever you have done to it. Well, well you, you could, it, like in theory, you can do the whole lot of it. If you've got, like, for example, like a, a, a little roller head, something like a little small detail roller. But whatever you're really comfortable with is the really answer to that question, in fairness. You know what I mean? Somebody prepared to do, like, me. If you're doing it on your own, you might just want to do 
this sort of section. If you've got two people doing it with you and the wind isn't catching your tape and you have your thing, you can literally just roll it out straight into it. Like, you know what I mean? You kind of pick up the, the, the tips on the application. So if you're doing it on your own, you can do meter strips. If you're doing it on your own, you want to do a big strip, lay the stuff down, literally sit your tape in it, roll it along so it's sticking the whole way. Whereas if you cut a big, huge piece for yourself, go to go down, this is flapping everywhere. Oh, Jesus, you're chasing it and all, you know? Or if you've got a man with you, just two of you take one end, fold it in half. So two of us are aiming the middle at the middle. Then we go down, sit to the side, start from the middle, tap it out, perfect. Yeah, so if you have two people on it, you can kind of put a bit of tension on it and just kind of rest it in nice and easy. If you're doing it on your own, or whatever, split it in half is the other way. As you'll notice there, the stuff is quite self-leveling, you know? It's pretty easy to get a nice finish with this material. You can literally be messy with it, and after a few seconds, it just sits back down. Self-levels. So it is quite easy to get a good finish. How long do you get to play around with it? Do you have that hardener in it? So we haven't got hardener in this. I could be playing around with this pot for ages. Like literally, you get a few hours out of it. Like so, if you're doing detail work, like you could be doing an awkward parapet wall, and it might take you might have a 25 kilo drum and you want three or four hours out. Just don't put the catalyst in. You've got the working time out of it. You equally as well, if you want to speed it up, move it along, you might throw a quarter in. Or if you say you're doing a balcony and it's in another county and you need to get home and do a top coat on the same day, whack it all in. Three hours later, it'll be set cured. You can top coat it or quartz it or someone can walk on it or whatever, like you know. So what sort of a slope slope can you use on? You can basically use it on zero degree slopes as well. No, what's the highest slope? The highest use? slope you can use it on. Pretty much you can use it on a vertical surface. Where you'll run into an issue with something like that is if you're trying to put a lot on in one pass, then you'll get dripping. Right? However, there is a way of counteracting that. There's two or three ways of counteracting. So if, if you're wanting to do something like that, there's two or three ways of counteracting that, right? One way, do multiple coats at different stages, right? So you're not having a big drip. So 1.5 kilo, 1.4, something like that per coat. Do it over two sittings and it won't roll back. You can even do that on a vertical surface. So that's way one, multiple coats. Way two, use some of the matting. And that way you can do it in one sitting, liquid. Tape, liquid. You'll get your two and a half mil build up, one sitting, go. Uh, way three, we have another product there which is thicker and it's got fibres in it. So you can apply it on vertical surface and it doesn't run as much. So three ways to do that, okay? Multiple coats, okay? Matting or use the Thixotropic detail material with or without fibres. So you can, it's a bit jelly-like, you know? This is liquid, so it's nice and easy to work with. So if you're doing big areas, it's really, you know, fast and easy to use. Got something like that, use the thicker material, bit of fibre, whack it on, multiple coats or mat. Right? Right, so this will complete all our basically joint reinforcements. So anywhere where you've got a joint or a transition from one material to another, i.e. a joint in your timber deck or you're meeting uh, what you call it, a trim or you could be meeting a capping or it could be like it could be from a, to a metal flashing or anything like that just basically use your reinforcement matting so if and when those different surfaces or substrates expand and contract at different rates there'll be a bit of bit of strength behind them to keep them all together section, okay again it's always basically following the same process Liquid followed by tape, followed by more liquid, and that'll give more than enough strength to any of those transitions or joints, etc. Good question. So this material is moisture cured. So some of the advantages of this, right? This is important stuff. Basically, right? Number one, it's breathable. Very important. Vapor will actually pass through it, or water vapor will actually pass through it in the form of vapor. Another thing is, it's moisture cured. So if for example it starts to rain, and it may well, 
what's on our roof here will actually be okay. It won't affect the integrity of the waterproofing system. So basically, the worst case scenario what will happen is you might get a few little, little imperfections, a few little spatters. In which case we can come back when it's dry and simply apply another coat, job done. But it won't affect the waterproofing of it, you know? Nice. One, you can either push it down and marry it into the system, or you can come back the next day and just slice it off or sand it off or whatever, you know? Can you get colours mixed for the top coat? Different colours? Or... Yeah, we have a few different colours there. For big projects, if you want something custom made, we can do that too. There's a minimum order quantity of like thousand kilos or something like that. So 200 pounds or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No primer required in between. No primer required in between. However, if you remember, we did prime this. Why did we prime it? Because this was done about two months ago or three months ago. That's the only reason we primed it. But for example, if it was that roof over there or something, and we're inside 48 hours, straight on, no primer. But again, if it goes, let's say we done this a month ago, a light primer, light clean, prime it. And then we'll get that good intercoat adhesion. Yeah?